Here we're going to evaluate an integral two different ways. First, by something called Weierstrass substitution, which will be quite involved. And second, by using symmetry and a trick, which will be nice and short. So the first thing that we're going to do is derive the rules of Weierstrass substitution and evaluate the integral that way. So here we want to let t equal to tangent of x over 2, and then that's going to force sine of x to be 2t over t squared plus 1 and cosine of x to be 1 minus t squared over 1 plus t squared, and then finally dx will be 2 over t squared plus 1 dt. Now that will allow us to totally rewrite our integral in terms of t, but I want to derive these rules first. And so I can do that in the following way. So if I set t equal to tangent of x over 2. OK, we'll start by completing the triangle associated with this value of tangent. So I'll draw a right triangle. And then I'll give this angle a measure x over 2. Then this is my right angle. And then since tangent is opposite over adjacent, we can label this length t and this length 1 and then complete the triangle via the Pythagorean theorem. This is gonna be the square root of t squared plus one. Okay, fantastic. And then immediately, we see that the sine of x over two is equal to, well, so that's gonna be um, opposite over hypotenuse, so that'll be t over the square root of t squared plus one, and further, cos of x over two will be equal to um, one over t squared plus one and that's under a square root. Great. And now we can use some like half angle formulas and stuff in order to get just the values of sine and cosine instead of the values of sine x over two and cosine of x over two. And in fact, what we wanna use is, the, is that sine of x equals twice sine of x over two times cosine of x over two. And I'll leave it to you guys to perform that fairly standard calculation that if you take this product given these values that we've derived, you get this value for sine. In other words, sine x is 2t over t squared plus 1. And then furthermore, we can do something similar for cosine. So we can write cosine of x as 2 times cosine squared of x over 2 minus 1. And further, it's just straightforward calculation with these values of sine x over 2 and cosine x over 2 to get to this value for cosine of x. So in other words, cosine x is 1 minus t squared over 1 plus t squared. Okay, great. Now we want to work towards this differential component, in other words, this dx. So let's go ahead and do that. So if we've got this thing up here, t, well, we can differentiate it to get dt. So we'll have dt equals, so the derivative of tangent is secant squared, so we've got secant squared x over 2 dx, but then by the chain rule, we also have a half out here. Okay, fantastic. So let's see what that gives us. That's going to give us dx equals 2 over, well, secant squared x over 2 dt. But now that we know secant squared is equal to uh, 1 over cosine squared, so that thing's in the denominator, so this is going to be equal to 2 cos squared x over 2 dt. But we know what cosine of x over 2 is. It's this thing right here. So that's going to give us 2 over t squared plus 1 dt, which is exactly what we needed it to be. Okay, so we've derived this tool of Weierstrass substitution. Now we'll evaluate the integral using this substitution. Okay, so we just built this tool of Weierstrass substitution and now we're ready to evaluate our integral using this tool. So I'll take the integral and now I'm gonna have t bounds of integration. I'll get to those in just a second. Notice sine x is gonna be replaced with this thing right here. So I have 2t over t squared plus 1, so that's my sine x term. Then in the denominator, I have sine plus cosine, so that'll be 2t over t squared plus 1 plus 1 minus t squared over t squared plus 1. Great. And then my dx is going to be 2 over t squared plus 1, and then I finally have a dt here. Okay, so there's a lot going on there. So let's be careful about all of the parts. 
So notice that I can take this t squared plus one that's in both terms of the denominator here and cancel it with the one that's in the numerator. So I got that and that and that are gonna all cancel each other out. And then next, let's notice when x is equal to zero, tangent of zero is zero, so that means t is equal to zero. And then when x is equal to pi over two, we have tangent of pi over four, but tangent of pi over four is one. So now we've successfully changed our bounds of integration. So now let's see what we get for this. We're gonna have the integral from zero to one, then we have two times two t, so that's gonna be a four t in the numerator. And then next we've got a t squared plus one in the denominator. And then we've got this quadratic that's also in the denominator. Notice we've got a leading coefficient of one, of minus one, I should say. So maybe I'll bring that minus sign up. And then that leaves me with t squared minus two t minus one in the denominator. So just to reiterate, I changed the sign of everything in the denominator and changed the sign of the numerator just like as compensation. Okay, so now let's go ahead and use partial fraction decomposition on the integrand here. So we want to look at minus 4t over t squared plus 1 times t squared minus 2t minus 1. We're going to separate this into pieces. So 1 will be at plus b over t squared plus 1. And the next part will be ct plus d. And that'll be over the other thing, t squared minus 2t minus 1. OK, good. So now let's go ahead and multiply by the entire denominator to get everything to cancel. And that's gonna leave us with a minus 4t on the left-hand side. And then on the right-hand side, we'll have at plus b times t squared minus 2t minus one plus ct plus d times t squared plus one. So notice that on the right hand side, we're gonna have t cubed terms from this t multiplying the t squared. We'll also have t squared terms, t terms, and constant terms. So I'll denote that by a t cubed here, a t squared, a t, and then just the number one for the constant terms. So notice the coefficient of t cubed on the right hand side after we were to multiply everything out would be a plus c. And then the coefficient of t cubed on the left hand side is zero. There's no t cubed over there. So now if we move on to the t squared terms, notice we've got an at times a minus 2t. So that's going to give us a coefficient of minus 2a for t squared. And then we've got this b times t squared, so we're also going to have a coefficient of b. Now we can play the same game over there, and we've got a coefficient of d for t squared when we multiply that second thing out. But there's no t squareds on the left-hand side, so that's all going to be equal to 0. Okay, so next let's move on to our t terms. So notice we get a minus a for a t term here and a minus 2b. So we have minus a minus twice b. Great, and then over here for our t term we just get c. So that's going to be plus c and then that needs to be equal to minus 4 because we do have a t term over here. All right, and now let's look at the constant terms. So we're going to have a minus b from this first bit and then a plus d from the second bit. So we have minus b plus d equals 0 because there's no constant term over here on the left. Okay, so let's see if we can simplify this. So this immediately means that d equals b since they add to zero. So that's good, but that's gonna transform that equation into minus 2a plus 2b. So here this term thing becomes minus 2a uh, plus 2b equals zero. So that means that a equals b. So in other words, we have a, b, and d are all the same. And then this one up here tells us that c is equal to minus a. Okay, so now I think we've got enough to put it all together. So notice that a, b, and d are all the same, and c is negative a. So that means this equation down here is going to become minus 4a equals minus 4. Good, but that means that a equals one. Okay, but if a equals one, then b and d also equal one, and c equals negative one. 
Okay, great. So now what I'll go ahead and do is take these values of A, B, C, and D and replace the integral up there with the decomposition. So in the last board, we used our Weierstrass substitution to transform this integral involving trigonometric functions into an integral involving rational functions. Then we did a partial fraction decomposition to get it down to this point. And now we want to evaluate this integral. And so I want to do this maybe in a couple of stages. So I'm going to write this as the integral from 0 to 1. And then I'll write a half here. And now I have 2t over t squared plus 1. So notice this half and this 2 will cancel. So that's just the same as that. And now I have plus 1 over t squared plus 1. So I've just rewritten this first term. Good. Next, I'll pull a minus half out of this last term. And then I'm going to rewrite this as a minus 2t plus 2 over. Now, this is going to be 1 plus 2t minus t squared. OK, great. And then I've got dt. Now, the important thing to notice is that this thing right here has a denominator whose derivative is the numerator. So that tells us we can integrate that like a natural log. So we've got 1 half natural log of t squared plus 1 for that. Then the antiderivative of 1 over t squared plus 1 is the inverse tangent. So we've got the arctan of t for that. And then notice here, the derivative of the denominator is also exactly the numerator. So we've got a natural log type thing for that. So we've got 1 half ln 1 plus 2t minus t squared. Now we need to evaluate that whole thing from 0 to 1. OK, so that's going to give me the arctan of t evaluated from 0 to 1. And now I'll put these two logs together using a logarithm rule. So I can write that as 1 half and then the log of t squared plus 1 all over 1 plus 2t minus t squared. Now we need to evaluate that from 0 to 1. OK, great. Now what I want to notice is if I plug 1 in here, I get 2 in the numerator and 2 in the denominator. So I get the log of 1, which gives a 0. If I plug 0 in here, I get 1 in the numerator and 1 in the denominator. So that's going to give me a uh, natural log of 1, which is 0 also. Then the arctan of 1 is pi over 4. Arctan of 0 is 0. So I get as my solution pi over 4. So we've got our solution to this integral. Now I want to evaluate it in a much quicker way. So we just evaluated this integral kind of a long way using Weierstrass substitution. Now we're going to do it a quick way using symmetry. So here I'll first set a equal to the integral in question. So 0 to pi over 2 of sine of x over sine of x plus cosine of x dx. And then I'll set b equal to its companion. So that's the integral from 0 to pi halves of cosine of x over sine x plus cos x dx. Great. So now notice that we get a plus b is equal to the integral from 0 to pi over 2 of sine plus cosine over sine plus cosine. But that's just the number 1. So we're just integrating dx. So that very easily gives us pi halves for the sum of a and b. Now next, I want to look at the difference of a and b. So that's going to give us this integral from 0 to pi halves of sine of x minus cos x over sine x plus cos x dx. And notice I can do a u substitution here. Notice if I let u equal this denominator, then the numerator isn't quite du, but it's minus du. Great. So that's going to allow me to rewrite this as the integral of du over u with a minus sign out front. Now let's change the bounds of integration. So when x is equal to 0, sine is 0 and cosine is 1, so I get a 1 right there. When x is equal to pi over 2, sine is 1 and cosine is 0, so that's get, I get a 1 right here as well. So this whole integral is 0. Now I can use something called the polarization formula for like this a plus b and this a minus b. And notice that a is the same thing as 1 half times 2a. So that's pretty clear. And then that's also the same thing as 1 half a plus b 
plus A minus B. So I just added and subtracted B. Great, we know that A minus B equals zero. We know A plus B is pi over two. So that makes the whole thing pi over four, which is a much nicer solution than the one we saw first. Okay, that's a good place to stop.